Gude. Hi, my name is uh, Thorsten Müller and I am the speaker and contributor of my Open German Voice dataset. A few weeks ago I have been invited by the Turkish TensorFlow community to talk a little bit about how to make machines or technology speak with your own voice. And after that video has been released, I received lots of positive feedback and I want to say thank you for all the positive comments and I really appreciate that. As the presentation has been on a theoretically level, I got asked some more practical questions on that process. And uh, for that I have decided to make a video, it's probably longer than I initially hoped it would be, so it might be longer than one hour, um, where I'm recording my screen while I do that complete process from preparing a voice record data set or a corpus, a text corpus, to record that corpus with Minecraft's Mimic Recording Studio, doing some audio post-processing, then uh, setting up Koki's text-to-speech repository, doing a training and finally run a text-to-speech server um, by Koki to have a simple web UI for text-to-speech synthesis. And Please do not expect a high sophisticated fancy edited video because that is not the case. I just recorded my screen while I try to show that process on practical examples. And um, I decided to not cut out any troubles I had or issues I run into because even after I do text-to-speech or my passion for text-to-speech for nearly two years now in my free time, um, I run into troubles and uh, errors I did not expect. Hmm, are there errors I would expect? Uh, no, but what I want to say is if you're new to this text-to-speech or open voice thing, please do not be disappointed if you run into any troubles upon your first steps with a text-to-speech. I personally am happy to be an active member on two really great community projects. On the one side, Microsoft AI, uh, an open source voice assistant, and on the other side, Koki's text-to-speech uh, community. And those communities are always uh, happy to welcome new members. So if you run into any troubles, do not be disappointed. Just go to one of these communities and ask for help. And I am really sure that we will help you on your first steps on open voice and text-to-speech. So that should be enough for the introduction. <laughs> the actual video is long enough. So I really hope that you will find some useful tips and tricks within the next video. And so I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, feel free to write a comment or to uh, ask in one of these communities. So that's it. Bye. If you want to record your own voice to train a text-to-speech model, you have for obvious reasons, you have to record a lot of samples of your own voice, which you can do with tools like Order City, or which I would recommend you to use is Microsoft's Mimic Recording Studio, because it offers some really nice benefits like trimming silence at the beginning and the end, and uh, having speech pace uh, in control, so you can see if you're speaking or recording too fast or too slow. So I would recommend and I personally use Mimix Recording Studio. So let's get started by jumping to GitHub and Microsoft AI. And then let's search for the repository Mimic Recording Studio. 
<clears throat> and depending uh, whether you have a git installed on your local system, you can use the git clone method or you can just download the zip file. So then I'm going into a command line terminal. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's create a new and empty TTS folder. And within that folder, I will use the git clone and download Mimic Recording Studio for that. This shouldn't take too long. Let's check it in our explorer here, TTS. Mimic Recording Studio, and there in special, let's take a look on the backend folder app. And first of all, into File System Python. In line 45, at least in my in my file right now, is calling an ffmpeg, and here you can see two parameters: the AC and AR. Uh, by default, Mimic Recording Studio is recording in stereo and with a sample rate of 44,100 Hz. This is not configurable by configuration files, but if you choose to record mono files or less sample rates, you can change these two values. For example, one for mono and for less sample rates. I personally, I stick with the defaults and do changes on that in the audio post-processing. The second file which is worth a look is called the audio Pi, Because in earlier versions, Mimic Recording Studio sometimes cut off silence too rough. So um, the last characters of a spoken text might be cut off. So Chris Gessling and El Tocino, they made a pull request and change on that. So you can add a little silence at the beginning and end, and that should avoid hard cut off from the last characters. Let's take a look. And the default value, as it's here in the trim buffer variable, is 300 milliseconds. I tried this out and tested some recordings, and for me, it worked nicely without cutting any characters off at the end. So you can stick with the default, but if you want, you can reduce this value or increase it. And the last point before going into recording session is the prompts directory. And you need, for obvious reasons, a text corpus, which you can record. And keep in mind, if you want to share your dataset and the corpus, the text, is an important part of that corpus or dataset, keep license issues in mind if you make it public. So you cannot read or use every text phrase for free on the internet. So keep license restrictions in mind. By default, there is an English corpus. I, as I am perfectly prepared, <laughs> uh, I prepared a corpus file for my mother tongue, so for German, which is here, the German demo corpus file. I will put that into my backend folder, prompts, and open it with my Visual Studio code. So, as you can see, the syntax is quite simple. So, we have the text phrase, which you have to record, and followed by a tab. No white spaces, but a tab and the length of the text in front. So one phrase on each line. So really a simple syntax, which can be generated or created easily. So to tell Microsoft's Mimic Recording Studio to use that corpus, I will copy the file name in my clipboard and switch to the main folder to a Docker Compose YAML. Mimic Recording Studio is based on Docker, so you have to 
prepare your local system that it can execute Docker containers. So let's open that one and let's take a look on our, where is it, corpus. As I said, by default it's using the CSV file for English corpus. Let's change this one to my German demo corpus. Save and so far we are done. Let's go back to my command line and switch in Mimix Recording Studio folder. Go to that level in, fact in directory uh, structure where the docker compose yaml is, is in and start a docker compose up. This might take a little bit of a time when running the first time because it's downloading base images and so on. And um, as I see here, there is uh, incorrect dependency. So I've broken my local installation. So sorry for that, but I tried it previously. So, and as you can see, this is um, no perfectly prepared happy path, shiny presentation. It is a live presentation and don't be disappointed if you encounter any errors or whatever. And I've decided to not cut out any struggling I'm running into because so even if I work on text-to-speech for nearly two years now, you can see I'm running into trouble too. So let's remove the front-end container and let's check the image and docker image. Remove image, front-end. So when I remove existing containers and images and run docker compose again, it should create the front-end container from scratch and hopefully this is going to work better than the last time. So as you can see, backend is already up and running and now MRS frontend is installing, resolving the packages, dependency and stuff like that. This might take some time. What is what is the issue here? Why does it does this not work out? I have to correct myself because I thought that uh, this warning, which came up previously on Docker Compose up command, is an error and will not continue, or Mimic Recording Studio will not continue starting. But as I have figured out, I just was not patient enough. So the process was still running up and I canceled it too early. So once you can see this message, your Mimic Recording Studio is up and running. So let's jump on our browser, open localhost port 3000. Here we are. That is a Mimic Recording Studio startup page with some guidance and hyperlinks. Uh, feel free to read them with several tips and tricks. In the bottom we have a simple field where we can enter the name of the speaker or the session we want to record. So in my case I will name it Torsten Voice, hit the record button and the next thing is our browser will ask for permission on using the microphone. And obviously I will grant that permission.
So here are a few frames starting with the progress showing we have a corpus of four phrases which is by far not enough for training a text-to-speech model and I've recorded none of them. Here we have the shown text and in this one in the upper right it's really helpful. I think after 20 recordings MRS will start calculating your average speech rate and it will show a banner in the upper right if you are too slow or too fast on speaking and recording. And you can start a recording with the spacebar and R for reviewing an existing record. So, dieser Text dient lediglich als kleiner Test. So, as you can see, Mimic Recording Studio will stop by itself, so it will detect the end of your recording. You start the recording process by hitting the spacebar, but the, the ending will recognize automatically. Next. Auch eine weitere Zeile kann nicht schaden. So, and as you can see, the progress, we have phrase two out of four. I will continue the last two. Ich bedanke mich bei allen Communities, die sich für freie und offene Sprache einsetzen. So, and Außerdem hoffe ich, dass meine Thorsten-Stimme dazu ebenfalls einen Beitrag leisten kann. So, that's it. Um, once you have finished your complete corpus, the last phrase will be shown uh, repeatedly, but we have done phrase 4 out of 4 with a total recording time of 15 seconds. And, oh, it's showing an overall average of 70.4 characters per second. So, if I go back to the localhost port 3000 and remove that slash record, um, I'm back on the, on the main page, but what's interesting about that is we now have not that text button to enter in the name, we have a welcome back Torsten voice message. So Mimic Recording Studio uses local storage in, in, in the browser to keep an eye on the current active recording session. And if we want to change that or start training from scratch, we jump in the developer console of your browser, taking a look to local storage, and we have a key value pair, name and UUID, with the value Torsten Voice I've entered, and a unique identifier. We will see this UUID more often on further steps. So it's 843 whatever. Let's close our recording tab and go back to the Explorer. And when we now go to our TTS Mimic Recording Studio backend directory, we now have more files and folders, such as the actual audio files. And here we have a subdirectory for each speaker using Mimic Recording Studio. And as I said shortly, the 843 whatever is that UUID we have seen in the local storage of our Firefox browser. And here, apart from a metadata file, we have our four recorded WAV files. Maybe we can open this one with order city. Where are we? Here. And as you can see, we have, make it a little bit bigger, we have the time mark starting from 0, .0 0.0 and 0 0.5, which means 500 milliseconds, 400, 300, and we have a perfect match of our parameter 300 milliseconds trim time. So, and the same at the end. So, you can see the value we set by default or is set by default to 300 is working nicely. No, we don't want to save this. And we, in addition to that, have a new directory called db, 
Mimic Recording Studio uses an SQLite database to keep track on your recording sessions. And that is really helpful, at least when it comes to export a data set for text-to-speech training. We have here a Mimic Studio.db and I personally, let's open this one out. In, I used dbeaver as a database tool and let's connect our dbeaver to our MRS database. So let's filter for SQL Lite. Next, just open our path db and we are done. We have two simple tables within here. One is the user model, which is quite simple. We should have some entries here. Oh no, I've cleaned up my database from previous tests. So here we have a list of all the users that have recorded using MRS. And again, 843 whatever, our UUID, our username and some statistics prompt, total time spoken, length spoken, English is the default language, and when has this user been created. But the more relevant part of that SQL Lite DB is the, the audio model. Because here we have an audio ID, which is a UID as the, the user, for the user. So every recording you do with Mimic Recording Studio has a unique identifier as file name, which is really nice because you do not have to struggle with renaming your recordings yourself with white spaces or special characters or so on. So we have four audio recordings made, we have four audio IDs, and we have the prompt here. So, and let's see F3065, for example, and hopefully we find F3065, whatever. So we have a, a mapping between the file name of our recording with, where are we? With the text we've recorded in that file. And that is really, really helpful. We have additionally by which user this file has been recorded, when it has been recorded. So this SQLite database makes it really easy to process further audio recordings. So, but once we are done, so let's take, we have made several thousands of recordings. Uh, general recommendation is if you do not fine tune an existing model, but you train a model from scratch, think on 16 hours and more of pure audio recording data. So if we have here our thousands of entries, we need to pack our data set. And I personally, I like the st file structure of LJ Speech. LJ Speech is a, a data set by Linda Johnson and Keith Ito. And for the directory structure, they use a simple WAFs subdirectory where all the WAV files are, are, within, are in and a metadata.csv file which describes spoken text and the file name. And that structure, that LJ speech directory structure, is widely known and supported. So at least by the Koki text-to-speech repository, if you choose to train your model using that code base, you have it much easier if you use that structure than develop your own pre-processing magic. So I let's go back to the finder um, and go to our root files. I have prepared some files because I want to want that you think I'm really professional, so I'm prepared for for sure. <laughs> no, just kidding. So and here I have a simple Python script um, which just um, makes a small select on our database and 
is generating or creating that LJ speech directory structure. Some simple var var variables and the speaker ID. That is the UUID of the user we mentioned several times now. So when I'm jumping in my backend, audio files, and for this recording session, that's my UUID. I'm going to put that into my script. Ah, by the way, that is a simple script I've written for myself. But if you are interested in me to publish that simple script, um, let me know in the comments. Because that is what all the YouTube people out there do. They always say things like, let me know this, put my comments down below. So why not? So if you are interested in that, let me know by posting a small comment. Let's go back to our Mimic recording. By the way, this value is printed when you have recorded all of your corpus and repeatedly or record the last phrase. So that's for this recording stuff. Let's go to creating a data set. I will stop MRS, which is not really needed, but I want to recycle this console output. So once this is stopped, I will go in my highly professional prepared files and just run Python 3 MRS to LJ speech. So that's it. Obviously using four simple wave files that process should not really take long. So and hopefully yeah in my text to speech TTS folder we are working in in addition to Mimic Recording Studio, we now have a subfolder called Dataset, LJ Speech version 1.1, and this is the syntax I have mentioned, a directory called WAFs with all the simple recorded files in, and a metadata.csv, which I'll show you. It is quite simple. So we have the file name without the .wav file suffix and split or divided with a pipe character um, the phrase and another pipe and the phrase to lower characters. So, and for with this directory structure, we have recorded our data set we have packed it into an LJ speech syntax, which can be easily trained without further pre-processing using the Cokies text-to-speech repository. And probably that will be the next step. After we finished our recordings and prepared our LJ speech directory structured dataset, we have to do one more thing until we can start with the training process. And as I said at the beginning, Microsoft's, Microsoft's Mimic Recording Studio is using stereo recording and a sample rate of 44,000 Hertz. And in general, at least at the text-to-speech configurations, I have seen less sample rate is used more often. So I've chosen to use a sample rate of 22,050 Hertz and mono. And to do that I will use a macro in order city. But before I will convert my recordings, let's see if the out-of-the-box recordings are stereo and have a higher sample rate. So I will take a look in my LJ speech WAFs directory. Let's open the properties of one file and it's saying stereo 44,000 Hertz. Okay, so let's start Order City and open a macro. 
I made a quite simple one called Mono22K, which has some simple steps, converting stereo to mono and setting project properties with a sample rate of 22K and export all that into a new WAV file. So I will apply this macro to files, but not to my original recordings. I would generally recommend keep the original recordings within Minecraft's Mimic Recording Studio backend audio files, keep them original and just work on the dataset we have exported. So let's go to the VAFs directory, choose our four recorded WAV files and let's see if this worked out. Okay, Audacity by general leaves the original files intact, so we have still stereo with the sample rate, but we have an additional folder called macro output. Let's take the same file name and check the properties, and now we have mono with the reduced sample rate. So what I will do, I take no, I will just for comparison reasons, I will duplicate this and remove the original ones and put them one level up and remove the empty folder. So now we should have um, the WAFs directory with the reduced sample rate in the mono files. Yeah, that's true. Okay. That was the step in between after finishing recording and preparing data set and start the training process, which will be the next step. So next point is we have to prepare and to set up everything for text-to-speech training. I personally use CoKey's text-to-speech repository and I'm a happy and active member on their community. Same for Mycroft AI. Both communities I really can recommend you to take a look and join us. We are always happy to welcome new members. So once we are at this point, what do we need to do? We need to go back to GitHub and leave Mycroft AI and jump to Koki's AI text-to-speech repository. And again, I will choose the git clone. But one little preparation before doing that. Let's go back to the command view and we are in our base TTS base directory. I would recommend setting up a virtual environment for text-to-speech training. So I'm running Python 3 with the module virtual environment and now the system is setting up a virtual environment. We can see this by the new directories bin include lib and the py virtual environment configuration. To enable this I will run a source bin activate and now I am as you can probably get by this prefix here, I'm in the TTS virtual environment of Python. Let's make a short update on the package manager and setup tools and wheel and upgrade these versions. Um, what's the issue? Oh. I think it's setup tools instead of setup tool. Looks much better. So now we have our virtual environment set up with the current version of Python package manager and setup tools and wheel. Now I would say let's clone our Koki. No, let's clone our Koki text to speech repo.
This is a little bigger than Minecraft's Mimic Recording Studio, so this will take some seconds more. By the way, Koki has a nice documentation on the, on the first steps, so please check out the README documentation and other documentations which is linked within the README. So. Okay, cloning will take some time. And as it's written here, if you are just interested in synthesizing speech on pre-trained models, you do not need to clone or compile or whatever things by yourself. You can just easily use a pre-packaged model, which is released by Koki. So, we are done so far. Okay, let's take a look on our structure right now. Uh, we have in our TTS base directory, we now have an additional TTS directory, which is the cloned repo by Koki's TTS. And with all, uh, I recommend checking the README documentation and, and many others. So, let's go into it. And we have requirements in this project. Where are we? Requirements text. I will take a look so you can see which requirements do we need to satisfy to run Koki's text-to-speech. So, this can easily be done by running a pip3 install minus r requirement.txt. TXT. What is happening now? Python will download all the needed dependencies and install them in our virtual Python environment. This will for sure take some seconds or longer, depending on your available internet connection. So, so installing the needed requirements has been finished. We can run a pip3 list and type more, and we will see lots of requirements has been added to our Python virtual environment. What's next is we run the Python 3 setup py install which will install some magic in the uh, virtual environment. So. so, that's been fast. If we just make a pip3 list, let's make a grab TTS, we will see this the Python setup has been um, created a TTS package currently in the running version 15.1. So that is one part of the preparations. But the fun and the part you are probably waiting for is how can I train my model? You use some files and directories which are relevant to text-to-speech training but it's just a brief overview, so no in detail on any specific file or directories. But um, after we changed in our cloned TTS folder and in the inside text-to-speech folder, we have a subfolder with lowercase TTS, and that folder contains all the stuff uh, which is relevant for Tachytron 2-based model trainings. Python uh, scripts for config management, for dataset management, and for the complete training stuff. 
Same is for the voice encoder model training or the vocoder model training. We have a similar file structure, all the Python magic for config handling, dataset handling and so on. In addition to the pure TTS and voice encoder training, we have um, a server uh, directory and that server contains um, a static web server. So once you have your model trained and your voice encoder trained, you can run a simple web UI where you can enter your text on a simple web front and it's synthesized. In addition to that, the server operates a simple API so you can interact with that server using a simple API call. And the second important or the next important directory is the bin directory. The bin directory contains lots of um, Python helper scripts. Uh, one of them uh, is the synthesize Python. The synthesize Python is a command line Python script and you can enter or pass the uh, text to that script and it will be synthesized a voice or a waved file on the command line. So it's the command line version of the server. And we have lots of executable Python scripts to train aligned TTS or Glow TTS or in the case I will show a Tegatron model and vocoder trainings for GAN, WaveGrad, WaveRNN. So the bin directory is really important when it comes to running training processes. And not just the training process, we have a little script called Compute Statistics, which I would recommend you to run before starting the training, because it's analyzing your data set and um, writing a NumPy statistics file, which can be passed to the Tegatron training itself. Uh, beside the Compute Statistics helper script, Koki TTS repository offers lots of Jupyter notebooks for dataset analysis. But in the case, if that's interesting, maybe I can make a short video on Jupyter notebooks in case of Koki's text to speech. So I would like to show you the simple compute statistics. So I'm already in the bin directory within our TTS cloned folder. When I run Python 3 compute statistics without any parameters, uh, the script will print that there are config paths and out paths as required arguments. The config path is, in my case, a simple JSON text file. To be honest, I know or I have read that um, Koki TTS or its main developer Aerogol is developing a better solution than JSON native format for config handling, but I'm not quite sure on the progress. But maybe I can make a short video when I know more details about that. So, but in my case, I will show you my config path or config JSON, which I will use for this case. So, for that, I will go to my prepared files directory and I have a config JSON prepared. So this is mainly the template uh, which is delivered out of the box um, is within Koki's TTS where it is comes to Tegatron 2 training. Um, you can adjust lots of audio parameters here and um, that alone will be a video much longer than this one. So I would like to show you the stats path parameter. And that is the uh, NumPy output file, which 
will be written by um, the compute statistics script. So here is my out parameter. So let's go. No, let's go back to the command line and rename out path is that. And in addition to that, we have a test sentence file. The test sentence file is a, a simple plain text file which has some text phrases in which will be generated as sample audio, I think, every 1000 steps on training process. So you can get an idea of what your model pro or you will hear progress on model training. I can recommend taking sentences here with different characters or special characters or whatever might be interesting for your language. So this is the plain test sentence txt which is entered in this parameter. And last but not least we have a link to our dataset. And the name here telling LJ speech so Koki TTS knows about the metadata and its structure. So this is the point the config JSON file. And let me take this parameter config path users. config json. So hopefully if this works well the helper script compute statistics will create will analyze my data set and will create some statistics in that numpy file. So let's give it a try. Okay it's not working uh, on the first shot. So what is the issue here? Unknown config file. Out path. Why isn't this working? Config path. Maybe it's something simple like the order. So let me copy that. Not sure, maybe the config parameter needs to be the first one and let's see if this okay so uh, using for just for recorded wave files that process is really fast normally when you have 10,000 or 20,000 or even more files that might take some minutes and as always depending on your available hardware. So this file is the, the statistics file which is already linked in, let me see, where is it? In the stats path. Oh, I forgot one parameter and that is the output path. Where is it? Output here. That is the path where Tacketron training will write its progress files, test samples, um, logs used by a tensor board and stuff like that. So this is document CTS Tacketron output. Let's see. No, this folder does not exist right now. So now we have set up our config JSON. We have a computed statistics file which is referenced in the config. We have a plain text file with some test sentences that will be generated on each thousand steps of training process or progress. And we have set our data directory and our output path. So 
Now we are ready and set up to start Attackatron 2 training based on these configurations. So, the training stuff is within that Python, uh, within that bin directory, so let's run train Tachytron Python. And again, without parameters called, it might say what's missing. So, we have several options, continue path or restore path if you just, if you have already a checkpoint from previous training, but that is not the case. Um, let's set our config path and that's it. So maybe I will make it easier for me and Just change the last command as the config path is already set here. And we run train tachytron. So now training is running. Let's go ahead. What's nice, it's printing out if we use NVIDIA CUDA which is not the case on my notebook, but in general I can recommend run training on a CUDA enabled system because it's faster than CPU based. You can see the, the git commit so you know on what level of co or what code base of Koki's text to speech repository you are training. It's creating within our output parameter or in output configured directory, it's creating um, a subdirectory uh, based on the training's training run name and the timestamp. Here are some audio parameters like the sample rate and stuff from the config path, including our NumPy computed statistics. It's found our four files in the dataset directory and its training is running. So, so this will take a long time. I cancelled my uh, Tachytron 2 training after a thousand steps because training a text-to-speech model based on a dataset with four recorded audio files does not make any sense. So this should just show the process and not the goal has not been to train a really a nice sounding model. So um, I cancelled my training after 1000 steps and what I would like to show you is um, the TensorBoard. So I will make this window a little bit bigger. And as you can see by the prefix, I'm still in my Python virtual environment. And I have switched to my TTS, Tachytron output directory, and the training run name and the timestamp. In general, I made a mistake here. If you set your run name or your training run name in the configuration, do not set a name with a white space as I have done here. Maybe I can show it to you what I mean. Uh, let's go to my no to my configuration file. I have set the run name to Torsten blank DCA and it is working on the technical side but the directory that is created has a white space in it so whenever it comes to copy or moving jobs and working within the directory you will have to struggle with that white space issue so please try to find a name without a white space and I have some files here the best model config, best model checkpoint, and in general, every thousand steps, a normal checkpoint file will be written or 
10,000 of, of steps, I'm not sure. And within that directory and in my Python virtual environment, I now will run tensorboard minus minus log directory equals dot because I am in that directory where my training logs are. If you are not running uh, your training on the local host machine, but on a server machine, at following parameter, minus minus bind underscore all. So TensorBoard will not just connect or bind to a local host IP, but it will connect or bind to your public IP. So you can access TensorBoard from, from um, remote systems. So now let's go to my browser and take a look. I'm working on localhost, so that works fine. And we now have our TensorBoard graphs and hopefully the decreasing losses and so on. So to get an idea what these graphs are meant, please read the documentations or ask questions on the Koki text speech repository. Please, one, one thing, I see a lot of opening, people opening an issue because they have trouble training their model. So please prefer starting a discussion. If you are not quite sure if it is an issue on the code repository or if you struggle with which of these huge amount of possible parameters did I need to, uh, do I need to set right. So if you think there is an issue, but I'm not quite sure, maybe it's better to start a discussion on the Koki TTS repository discussion page. And if you are right and it is an, an actual issue, then file the issue. So some additional information to um, the tensor board. We have uh, the step time, which is a nice information and the train iteration statistics. So let's see where we have it. Where is it? Where is my... Where is my average... Oh, no, here. Here's my average step time, which is around 1.1, 1 .1, 1, 1 1.5, whatever. So this is a step time. And if you are not sure how many steps are required to have a text-to-speech model, there is no hard value. There is no fixed end on that process of training a TTS model. But maybe it's helpful to think you have to train at least for 20 to 30,000 steps, not for the model, but to get an idea if your configuration is working. So you can imagine some sort of voice in that generated test audios. When you reach around 100,000, 150,000 training steps, that could give you an impression of what your voice, of what your synthesized voice could sound like. And when you reach around 400,000 steps, that might be a, a value where your TTS model might be trained enough to be used in a production or in a, in a, uh, in a normal uh, environment. So these values that are personal values I figured out myself or I've heard or read in the community documentations. So 20 to 30,000 steps to check if your configuration is working in general, 100,000 round steps to get an idea of your voice, what could it sound like, and 400,000 steps on a usable text-to-speech model. Well, let me say thank you to all of you who watched my video up to this point now. I know it has well, been a long time, several steps, but now as we have trained our Tekatron 2 model, or at least in my case, uh, the first best model after a few training steps, 
I want to show you how to synthesize a text with that trained model. On the one side using the synthesized Python script on the command line and after that in the integrated Koki text-to-speech server component. So for that uh, let's go back to our command line prompt. Um, and switch to our TTS bin directory. Within that bin directory we have our synthesized py python script. That will be our version to generate a text on the command line. And as I said previously, I made a mistake as I set a run name with a white space. So, and if you work on the command line and you have white spaces in the path to your model or configuration files, uh, that does not make things very easy. So I've renamed my directory and replaced the blank with a, with a dash symbol. Uh, there's one thing I want to show you. And when I go into my TTS, take it to output directory and here's what I mean I've replaced that initial blank sign with the minus. Koki's text-to-speech training scripts do one great thing um, among others but um, they copy the configuration file in the output directory so if you probably will run several test and training runs and you are not sure hmm, what has been my configuration in that specific output directory. You can just take a look to the config JSON which is copied in the output directory by Koki text speech So I personally I use this a lot as I've ex experimented with several configuration parameters and so on. So what I would like to try now is I would like to take these two files the best model or checkpoint, whatever its name will be, uh, that is the actual model and the config JSON. These two files are required when you want to synthesize a voice, either on the command line or with the server web UI. So let's go back to our command line prompt, switch into the TTS repo bin directory and then run the Python 3 synthesize py. There are a few parameters or arguments required. Um, when I write the config file, as I have said, the checkpoint name, the text you want to synthesize for obvious reasons, uh, an output directory or file which will be a wave formatted output file and to use CUDA or not. By default it will not use CUDA or will auto detect, not quite sure on that. So give the try running config path which should be my documents let me TTS tech no techatron to output and here's my config JSON. When I just run it that way, probably the missing checkpoint will be an issue. Does it print it exactly? Uh, not sure. But I will in addition to use to the config path, I will use the model path and the wave file out path. So let's go back to the file and we choose our model path, which will be in the same directory as the above one. Uh, take a tron output and there is our best model. Then we have our text. This is test. 
and finally our out path which I will be set to users to my TTS and uh, first test dot buff. So hopefully I've set the correct configuration path. I've set the checkpoint model path and direct uh, and file the text I would like to synthesize and the file where the output waveform should be saved in. Let's give it a try. Okay, no obvious error. That's good. Okay, we have a max decoder steps issue. That is because my current trained model for a few steps is not really able to generate anything close to a human voice. So uh, that will uh, go away if you train a model that can deal with the length of the text you want to synthesize. So, But nevertheless, the file should be saved anyway. So, we have now a saved file in our output directory. Let's. I will not play back that file because it cannot sound like anything useful sounding like human voice, not after around thousand steps. But let's check if it's a waveform file at least. Yeah, after we successfully synthesized a, a text using the command line synthesize Python, we will now go back in our directory structure one level up and in the subfolder server. Here we have our server Python script, which I will run by a command line and will pass the additional arguments as I did for the command line synthesize Python. And we have the config JSON, we have the model path. Um, Anything else? No, because the output parameter should not be necessarily necessary, not be required, whatever, not be required. And um, that should be it. Oh, okay. So now we have a running web server on a local host port 5002. So let's get back to our Firefox browser. Open localhost port 5002. And here we are. So you now have that simple web UI that Koki Text Speech Repository offers by default. So let's enter the same text. It's an audio of 1 minute and 22 seconds and I just heard it in my headphones and it's just pure random noise. <laughs> so it's, it is far away from being a human-like voice. It's loud, okay, <laughs> but that's all. <laughs> it's just loud. Yeah, and that's it uh, for now. <laughs> um, I hope you could find some helpful tips and tricks on this practical screen recorded walkthrough. Uh, I know it's uh, not a happy path and it's not the, the <laughs> not a really a great video, but I want to give you a short, no, an, an honest, not a short, <laughs> by far not a short, but I want to give you an honest impression and an overview of what do the tools I used look like? How do they feel like when preparing all the steps? Starting from preparing your text-based corpus for recording session, setting up Minecraft's Mimic Recording Studio, doing some stereo, mono, sample rate adjustments with Order City, preparing to set up Koki's text-to-speech repository requirements, 
and training your text-to-speech model up to that point where you should be able to synthesize your voice using the command line or the web UI. So, I really hope you find that video a little bit helpful. Um, if you would like to get in contact with me, you can um, follow me on Twitter under Torsten Moise or get in contact by Microsoft or Koki communities. So, I wish you a nice and pleasant rest of the day and goodbye.